How's it going gamers? RebelX here in the War Room and today we're looking at Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, Tips and Tricks Part 2. This is where we'll be looking at how to build your mother base, where you can find Dee Dee, the cute little uh, wolf pup that will be a big uh, help to you later on in the game. Also too is how to survive your first boss battle against the Mist Squad or the Skulls, if you will, along with a few other uh, tips. So let's get into that right here, right now. I'm sure about the breed. We'll get bigger. Like this. So let's start things off by where you can find Didi, the wolf pup. So you can find Didi in this located area here in the northern cabal in Afghanistan. Now I found uh, Didi at night when I was traveling on my horse, but you can really find Didi any time of the day. What you want to keep your ears open for is the howling and the cry of a pup. Uh, Didi will follow you for some distance. Now you can miss this pup. You, there's actually a few occurrences in this game where you're only going to be able to run into this uh, pup a few times. If you miss these opportunities, the dog will be gone permanently in this game. So when you do find the pup, immediately extract the pup out of there and there you go. That's how you get one of the coolest companions you can get in this game. Now let's talk about how to upgrade Mother Base. Now, the two places you want to upgrade at the start of this game is your R&D facility and your support facility. Now, R&D uh, platform allows you to better upgrade your weapons, your uh, customization options, upgrades, and so on and so forth, the more you upgrade this uh, facility. The next thing too, you want to upgrade the platform facility because you can call in airstrikes, better uh, backup support for your helicopters. These are the two most essential things you want to start off at this game that will be available to you. So I do recommend you upgrade the R&D facility and the support facility first. Now when it comes to uh, moving your staff around in different areas of the game, this is actually a pretty simple feature they put in this game. So as you can see on the right hand side of the screen, obviously letter grades are given to each soldier depending on how good they are or how bad they are at a certain field. Now it doesn't matter whether what their uh, letter grade is, as you progress further in the game, they will uh, gain experience and they will improve on whatever part of the level or sorry, the facility you put them in. So the, so say for example if a guy has a letter D in combat, you put him in the combat field, he survives, guess what, he'll move, he'll upgrade to then to a C, to a B, until finally an A if he lives that long. But you can kind of get how this works. But if this is a little too confusing for you and you, you kind of don't want to waste your time having to put people in the right spot, on the bottom right hand of the screen you can notice called Auto Assign. You click that button, the game will automatically assign people to their right areas that they fit in. One thing I've noticed about this game, once you have your combat facility upgraded, you're going to have to put people in there yourself. The game won't automatically do it for you. But uh, one little thing you have to do for yourself, but everything else can be taken care of for you and auto-assign. But in combat, as you see right here on the screen, you can actually assign people to do missions. These are not missions you can participate in, but these are missions they go around the world. Kind of like mercenary missions, if you will. Once they complete these missions, not only will they gain extra experience, making them a lot tougher, but you also will get rewards. You'll get more GMP points to spend on your mother base for your equipment. The more and more they uh, participate in these missions and they survive, keep in mind, they have to survive these missions, the more points you will gather. But make sure you put the right people in the right spot. The game will actually combine your, fighting, your team's fighting ability with their opponent's fighting ability. You can take risks, but I wouldn't recommend it because they can get killed and they're not that easy to replace. But as I said too, here are the reward systems that you do get for completing those missions. So speaking of combat in the field, let's talk about Snake. So for me, I like to give Snake a lot of silenced weapons. You can upgrade silenced uh, weapons uh, about midway point through the game, but I do recommend you focus on silent weaponry combat instead of putting them to sleep since they can regain consciousness very quickly as you saw in my last video. Now, the one of the things you want to get early on in this game is C4. And you can get C4 when you have enough GMP points and you've upgraded your R&D facility. So another reason why you need to get that first. Now there are two things you want to blow up when you're entering an enemy base. The first one is this radar dish uh, comm system. This system, when activated, this is what allows enemies to call in reinforcements and mortar strikes on your position. Once you destroy these, you do get bonus points. You do get GMP points and also you actually destroy the enemy's chances of calling in reinforcements and mortar strikes not only at that base but in the surrounding area. The next thing you want to focus on is destroying these AA radar dishes. By destroying these you're allowed to call in more airstrikes and your helicopter can come in to help you more often so another important reason to do this. All in all C4 is a must have, a must have in this game both for destroying radar dishes and for assassination missions when enemies are in a building. Now last, but certainly not least in this video, let's talk about how to survive your first major boss battle encounter with the Mist Squad, aka the Skulls. You've encountered these guys at the very start of the game, but now it's time to fight them. Now, when you enter in this battle, you will have a rocket launcher. 
uh, at your disposal. But there's a, a very specific way how to use this rocket launcher since these guys can teleport. So we're going to go into that right now. Now at the start of this match, enemy soldiers you've killed earlier on will actually come back to life as zombies. In traditional zombie fashion, all you gotta do is take a few shots to the head and take them down and that's as quick. you don't have to worry about them anymore. You don't have to really focus on them that much in this fight because they are very slow. Only focus if they gang up on you. Now when you're first fighting against the Mist Squad, don't bother locking onto them with the rocket at op in the open field. They will teleport and dodge your rocket. You only have a little amount of shots to take these guys out. The best thing to do is run lead them towards a, uh, a canyon pass or have their backs facing against a rock. As you just saw right there, I had about four of them having their backs facing a rock. I fired my rocket. They weren't able to teleport out of the way because their backs are up against a wall. This is the best way for you to take these guys out. The splash damage from the rocket itself will heavily damage them. So lead them towards a, a crevice in the, in the pathway, have their backs facing against the wall. A couple shots, at least two to three, will wipe them out. You can easily take out at least three to four of these guys after a few shots. There will be a possibly a straggler or two still left. Try to lure them towards having their back facing against the wall and then finish them off with a rocket. And there you go gamers, you survived your very first major boss battle in Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. That's all the time we have for today here in the War Room. Hope you enjoyed our Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain Tips and Tricks Part 2 video. We'll be doing a lot more gameplay tips and tricks videos on this game very very soon along with a lot more games as we reach further on to the end of the year with all those big blockbusters coming out. If you like what you see, feel free to subscribe to The War Room for more. And until then, we'll see you guys next time, here in The War Room.